And good afternoon once again. Today's webinar is a joint presentation that will demonstrate how to bridge the gaps that result from disconnected systems. Your presenters today are Hard Dollar Solutions Engineer Justin Murphy and Viewpoint Sales Engineer George Molnar. Again, to remind you, during the webinar, your phone lines will be muted, so if you have questions or need to communicate with us, please use the chat function in the dialog box and go to webinar. Justin Murphy is in his third year as a solution, solutions engineer with Hard Dollar's Industry Solutions Group. He is responsible for providing technical demonstrations and proof of concepts to new and existing customers. He enjoys providing innovative and out-of-the-box ideas to customers adopting HD's PCM solution. George Molnar is a sales engineer with Viewpoint Construction Software and has been involved with the company for over seven years. In George's role as a sales engineer, he ensures that Viewpoint's products align with customers' needs. He has a deep industry knowledge and extensive experience with Viewpoint software suite. In George's spare time, he loves to fly fish. He and his wife have a one-month-old daughter who is doing a great job of keeping him up at night. George, we hope you're well rested. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Justin Murphy, who will lead off today's presentation. Justin? Thank you, Tony. Great intros. Um, yeah, those are great. Probably the best intro I've ever gotten. I don't know about you, George, but I like it. Um, so the purpose of today's webinar, as Tony mentioned, is the, is the ERP integration. We're emphasizing our strategic partnership between Hard Dollar and Viewpoint. And the real, the key takeaway is the, the streamlining of data between these two system, two systems. And hopefully that will allow you to achieve uh, more efficient processes and maybe reduce um, some uh, time 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 consuming tasks. Uh, before we dive into the solution, we're going to take a few minutes to introduce both our respective companies. Um, then we're going to address some business issues um, that I'm going to use the word uh, plague plague project controls teams. Um, some of the problems from those business issues, and then show the solution both from a hard dollars perspective, providing you know a detailed estimate and then transitioning over to view, Viewpoint to do that project execution within their system. So with that, let's go into our first slide. And a little background on Hard Dollar. So Hard Dollar is a project cost management software. We have core competencies in estimating and performance tracking. Uh, we, you know, at, at the end of the day, we like to provide a centralized repository to hold all of your cost and productivity data. We've been in business for 24 years, serving owners, contractors, EPCs, and our you know primary focus as far as industries are oil and gas, uh, shutdown, turnaround, infrastructure, and mining. Um, I don't think I have anything else to say on Hard Dollar, so let me turn it over to George, and he can give you a breakdown on Viewpoint. Well, thank you, Justin. Uh, love the introduction there. That was very good. So as a, as a bit of background on Viewpoint, We've been serving the construction industry now for uh, well over 35 years. Uh, we provide construction accounting, operations, and project collaboration software uh, to, to help companies effectively manage and, and grow their businesses. Um, we, we are committed to building lasting, lasting relationships, um, and we partner with companies like Hard Dollar uh, to provide you the construction software that is highly configurable, scalable, and easily integrates. Uh, so it's giving you closed loop project cost management. Uh, we take pride in providing our customers regular project, product updates, exceptional support, and training that assures your needs are met today and into the future. Uh, we appreciate Hard Dollar including us in the webinar, and I look forward to demonstrating how we can help increase information accuracy through your projects. So I'll turn it back over to you now, uh, Justin. Thank you. Thank you, George. So let's first talk about problems and business issues, and I kind of use the word uh, plague in the beginning. So what plagues our project teams? And at the end, at the end of the day, what is the, the main goal uh, of a project delivery team? It's to turn in a project on time and, and within budget. And um, typically, that doesn't happen. Or I shouldn't say typically. We don't want that to happen. And there's, there's multiple reasons why. Right? There's multiple systems um, that are used in that project lifecycle. There's uh, multiple stakeholders. 
there's lots of different uh, data and lots of different data that's needed by different people. Um, so resulting from that, well, we have to deal with the main business issues of cost and schedule overruns, uh, missed, missed revenue opportunities, disappointing prof profits. If we turn in a underperforming project for a particular owner, um, the likelihood of us getting repeat business is going to be um, severely damaged um, and probably unlikely. Right, so looking at those business issues, those problems, uh, we, have, we have kind of come to the conclusion that there's a common ingredient um, that results from that. And that is the disconnection of your software ecosystems. Right, so in a, pro in a given project life cycle, a particular company is going to utilize a variety of software tools from design takeoff to estimating to project management to performance tracking to document management, to ERP accounting. Um, and all of, those inf all of those systems have um, their own data, their own data sets, um, relevant reports, and the project team needs, needs data from all those systems in a timely manner to make proactive decisions instead of reactive decisions. Right? So having, a, having a disconnected systems results in more of a reactive approach to project management. And which in turn causes inefficient and um, ineffective overall PM, uh, project management reporting controls. And going back to that business is issue is you're going to have cost overruns, you're going to have schedule overruns, you're going to lose, lose out on revenue, and you know, miss those profit numbers. So in a disconnected environment, one of the key things is things break. When, we, when we're working in isolated systems, um, typically, the, the transfer protocol between system A and system B is we have, uh, you know, Joe Smith, the college intern, who's going to be doing data entry, right? Taking some, some data export out of one system and manually typing it into another. That's a time-consuming task. It's, you know, labor-intensive. And by the, time, by the time Joe gets that system in, it's, it's already outdated, right? So the project team is working with outdated information. So the, the, key, the key thing we want to do is bridge the gap between those disconnected systems. In order to bridge that gap, we want to integrate systems. And for the focus today, we want to integrate the, the details of, of the hard dollar estimating with the project execution and, and management of the overall project lifecycle with viewpoint. The benefits of being able to do that are threefold. One, you gain confidence in the numbers, right? From, a, from an estimating standpoint, we have the detailed breakdowns. We're capturing our cost, our quantities, our man hours, the equipment hours, and account, accounting for our directs and indirects and profit. So that you have that, that confidence um, from the estimator all the way up to the owner of the company that this number is solid and this is what we're going to go bid, bid, bid with and win that work. We're reducing our overall risk. Right, being able to integrate those systems, uh, we kind of remove those time-consuming time, time, time consuming tasks, those redundant tasks, um, and we have that timely information. And lastly, we have that inc increased accuracy. Having that, that data connection or up-to-date um, with, the, with the latest, the latest um, data that is being provided from, est from the estimating side as well as the latest information provided by Viewpoint on the performance and tracking side. And with that, we're going to transition into some product demonstrations. I'm first going to go through hard dollar, looking at a couple, couple views, couple scenarios uh, from the estimating standpoint, and then turn it over to George, and he'll take you through the Viewpoint system. So right now we've we've switched to our R dollar application. We're looking at a, a sample project, Fourth Ave, uh, infrastructure based. Um, we're within our cost breakdown structure register. And first thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm my I'm on a save view. That's my viewpoint webinar one. In this simple view, I'm just looking at a high level breakdown of essentially my my pay items, my bid items are provided by a, by an owner. Um, capturing quantities, unit of measure, 
unit cost and total cost. If I needed to, I can, you know, from an estimating side, look at the breakdown of some of these subcomponents and make, making sure I'm accurately capturing the scope needed to complete that work. As I go through my breakdowns, I can then transition to maybe a different view relevant to the task that I'm doing. As I go through my breakdowns, and I might want to introduce new data sets or new data columns. So in that first scenario, we're looking at essentially just our cost and our quantities. Well, now I want to introduce kind of productivity. Um, what are my total man hours? What are my total equipment hours? And what's my production per day? Right, so if we look at excavation as an example, we have 120,000 cubic yards, total of 2,400 man hours, and it looks like we're doing 4,000 cubic yards per day from a production standpoint. So as I vet out these numbers, I can now transition into another view. Perhaps once I have my production set, I want to see my, my cost breakdown between my major categories. And typically I see major categories are labor, material, equipment, and subcontracts. So by quickly switching my view, I can still see my quantities, my total cost, but you know, taking um, any of these line items, we can now see what the breakdown between labor, equipment, materials, and subcontractor is per each of these cost items. And after we go through all our cost categories and vet this out, we can then transition to another view. Maybe we want to focus in on our retaining wall. And by leveraging our dollars benchmarking capabilities, we can actually compare this estimate against historical jobs. We can benchmark both our estimated values as well as bring in the actual, um, the actual results from viewpoint. As we're building out a new retaining wall, how is this, how is this perform or is this in line with what we've done in the past? Right? So looking at this particular line item retaining wall, we have 850 cubic yards and our, you know, our, our cost is pretty close. Right now we're at 440 a cubic yard and based on our benchmark values, the average has been 443, so we're right in line. There's some differences between the, the details um, of that retaining wall, particularly in the footings, so maybe one job it was a little more complex or a little simpler, but overall we're right in line with where we should be. So once we confirm that our estimate is, is I guess, measured, measuring accurately or is, uh, is in line with what we've done in the past, we might want to see how it's lining up from a job costing perspective. So as I switch my view, I'm bringing in my, my account code or my job cost code, and I might want to just focus in on all the items that are assigned to a certain um, account codes or cost codes. So when um, when I load up, when we do our data transform, tra data transfer from HD to viewpoint, and we would expect to see certain job cost codes created, um, certain costs associated with that job cost code, man hours, equipment hours, etc. So the the estimator, the team can easily get that uh, that view by just switching to these pre pre predefined views. Once we confirm our job costing and that the it's costs are being accurately assigned to the designated accounts, you might want to transition and just make sure that we haven't missed anything, right? So we might want to switch to our our data map that gives us a high level overview of, of our of our target price. So for this particular job we're looking at five point five million and we we can see how that breaks down between a profit, an indirect, and a, a direct cost, right? And assuming everything is up and up, right? And we go out and bid, bid the job, turn in our bid, we're awarded. We need to take all this information that we put together, you know, just starting off with, we've got a, you know, a, a series of bid items, pay items from the owner, we detail them out, we provided um, a level three, a level four, uh, breakdown as far as the cost goes. We have accounted for our man hours, our equipment hours, our resources, and we won the job. Now we want to use all that information and give it to, to viewpoint as a starting point and not have someone just type it in, but we just want to transfer the data. 
So by going into my reports, I can I can export this data into a format that viewport viewpoint can easily digest. And at this point, I'll I'll transition over to George and. You can take it away and make sure this project comes in on time and within budget. Great. Well, thank you very much, Justin, and uh, you know, really, thank you for doing all the heavy lifting for us. Um, you know, you create that file, um, and that has the structure uh, of of the job is what we're going to define it here in Viewpoint. So the way we pick that up um, as part of our standard tool set uh, is an imports module. And one area specifically in project management is what we use um, to pick up the estimate file and pull it back, pull it into viewpoint so that we can start going through uh, the buyout process for subcontracts and materials. And we can start you know, obviously accumulating costs and going through uh, the rest of the project cycle. So the way the import process works is it's broken down into really four, four kind of key steps. Um, the first step is one we spend a bit of time on. Uh, making sure we're, we're interpreting the information coming from hard dollar correctly. Uh, we have standard templates um, that align well with, with what Justin just showed us. And we can also set other rules, um, which I'll show you in just a minute. Uh, so the way the import process works is as I go through, I can go out and do an import here. I can go out, find my, my file uh, that hard dollar provided for me. I can go through and Give it a give it an ID number. Um, it doesn't have to be anything uh, specific. It's more of an internal tracking number for you. And what this is going to do, it's going to go pull the information out of that file and set up that structure for us. Uh, it's then going to give us the ability to go through and do any data checks or or do any error checking. Uh, we can even do some roll up uh, in that file before we actually create the live project in viewpoint. So the edit work tables here is, is your ability to go in for that project. Um, it's going to pull through all the details that our dollar provided us. So the job information, the addresses um, will come through for us. All the different pay items uh, on the job will come through for us as well. Um, you'll also notice there's some areas highlighted in red. Uh, when we first start importing projects, uh, one of the common areas that uh, can take a lot of time for customers that don't have the ability to, to do an import like this is they need to translate everything from the estimate file. So one of the functions you'll have here out of the box is if there's information like a unit of measure or an account code or a pay item code, anything like that, that isn't set up in viewpoint but is in hard dollar, these import tools allow you to on the fly uh, create different cross references. So here I've got an invalid unit of measure. Um, it tells me what it pulled through from hard dollar, so I can go on into uh, viewpoint here, go out and look for our unit of measure. It happens to be an uppercase. So as I save that and move off the record, it's going to ask me, do I want to go out and create a cross-reference? And I'll go ahead and say yes to that. And that cross-reference is now tied directly into our hard dollar uh, import file here. So next time I pull in an, an estimate, um, it's automatically going to convert that information for me. And it also went out and fixed all the other areas where that's used. So there's a nice uh, tool up here at the top as well. So if there are any configuration um, issues like that, um, you can scroll through and just look at the areas that, that uh, are of concern. So it can really cut down on the time required to go through and get this estimate ready for job costing. The other big area is all those different cost codes or account codes that Justin um, assigned for us are all built in here automatically. So our breakdown for labor, our burden, uh, our own equipment, our rented equipment will all be broken out for us. Um, at that job cost level, we are tracking what quantities or units you had in, uh, you're expecting, what the different rates are, as well as the cost for hours. So we'll have that amount of detail that you want to define in your estimate uh, here set up and ready to job cost. Um, if you do want to do some roll up of some of the estimate information, uh, that's certainly something you can do as well. And that's all in the uh, setup of these templates here. One of the other big areas is pulling in all subcontracts and materials. Um, so same thing for material codes, being able to do cross references for what materials hard dollar has versus how it's set up in viewpoint. That can happen for you automatically, as well as if there's any vendors allocated already, 
in a hard dollar, um, those can default for you here. And this gets us into uh, the buyout stage here uh, pretty quickly. So the import estimates tool allows you to go through, uh, pull in your file, do some error checking and review. Uh, if you need to make any modifications for whatever reason, you, you certainly can. Uh, but we do need to give you the options to do those things. And when we're ready, we can go through and, and upload it right into uh, the project management system. So I can go through and assign a project number. Um, I've already done this earlier today, but it'll go through and set up that project for me. Um, if you're re-importing it, um, it, it will modify uh, the existing. So if you did make any changes, you can do that no problem, um, as well as down the road. If you have a change order coming up on your project, um, you put together an estimate for it in hard dollar and you need to be able to pull that into your job so you can properly uh, bill for it and track the cost, um, you can import change orders as well, uh, which can be a big help, especially if you've got a large, large change order. So importing it sets up your job for you in Viewpoint. And once I'm there, now I can go through the rest of the uh, management tools uh, and start accumulating costs, managing that project throughout the life cycle. Uh, when we do that, most of the people who are using Viewpoint um, access it through uh, one of our work center tabs. And this is an example where, as a user of the system, I can define what areas of the project uh, I'm responsible for. So here I'm active on uh, my procurement folder that I set up. I'm active on uh, purchase orders for material or for the job. And I can see a list of all the open POs out on my project. Um, up at the top, I have different filters, and based on your security assignments, your users who are managing the job will only see what they have rights to. And if I go down and, and pick um, the project I, I just imported, um, I can get right into some of the buyout screens. So what I mean by that is as I set up my project, it's going to pull in all the different material and subcontracts when I said I need to acquire for the project, and based on because it's an integrated system, if it's material we have on hand in inventory or if it's something we need to purchase outside the system, uh, we can go on through and start allocating you know, who, what vendors uh, we're assigning it to uh, with the full lookups available to you. And when you're ready, you can have Viewpoint generate that purchase order for you. It'll create a commitment on your project. If there's a review and approval process based on hierarchies, you can build those tools in as well. So getting materials and subcontracts allocated um, is a straightforward process. Here's my list of, of items that I'm required to purchase, provided by hard dollar, and then I'm able to go on through and start managing my job. Some of the other key tools in here, um, one example cost report, uh, we call it the unit cost drill down. Uh, the great thing about this report is as you're managing the project, I can run this report for a specific period of time. So if I just wanted to look at actual dates, you know, look at one week's worth of information, I can go ahead and do that. Um, so if I take a look at one of my projects out here, as I drill into it, I'm going to start seeing each pay item. Um, and then I'm going to see a further breakdown of what our agreement was with the client, what we've billed the client to date, what our job costs, what our estimate was coming from hard dollar, and then what our actual spend has been. So as I drill in, I'm going to get into each different pay item, and I'll see those values coming across the top. So our contracted rate for 25,000 cubic yards of excavation was $3.70. Uh, to date, I can see we've billed a little over 6,000. We've only uh, taken out of the ground 2,500 here, but it's cost us $7.33. So that type of comparison is based on that structure that we pulled through from hard dollar. And then as I drill into that pay item, now I'm seeing those cost code breakdown um, showing up for me. And now I can compare my unit cost estimate for each of those activities to what it is for the period I've run the report or for this week, what it is job to date. So I can tell we're, we're still well behind um, on our estimate at $1.05 for this week. Uh, so we're not quite catching up. So we're still well behind on our cost for the job to date here. And the other component of that is showing you the gain loss over your estimate as well as over your project manager's projected final cost. So along with being able to track commitments and the actual cost against the job, we're also tracking that projected quantity. And that projected quantity comes into play 
uh, you know, typically on a weekly or monthly basis to helping to make sure we're accurately forecasting the projects. So the entire structure is available for you here. And as you drill into uh, labor or equipment or one of those other items, you're going to get down into the actual transactions if you want it. And if you're associating any timesheets or invoices uh, in the system, you'll be able to access them right from here. Because it's integrated, that's going to be driven from payroll and AP and all the other uh, optional modules as well. So at the end of the project, if we've gone through and we've completed our, our, our job, we've accumulated our costs, we've done a great job managing it, um, getting that actual cost back in the viewpoint is the same process as what you saw Justin do. Uh, run a report to create the export file, and that export file pulls those actuals back into um, hard dollar. So thank you, Justin. I'll hand it back to you. So uh, thank you, thank you, George. Um, at this time, we're going to do a little Q and A, and uh, turn it over to Tony and start queuing him up. You bet. And again, uh, we would remind you that uh, since your phone lines are muted, uh, we would ask you to please um, use the chat function so we can take your questions that way. Um, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and ask the questions and then invite George and Justin to provide the answers. Um, and the first one we have coming up, uh, how does the structure of the job defined for job costing let me start that over. How is the structure of the job defined for job costing in either hard dollar or viewpoint? George will let you take that first. OK. Um, so the, the structure of the, the project is up to you and how you define it. Um, within viewpoint, um, you have the ability for each um, job to assign different pay items or what we call contract items. And below those, you're able to associate um, the cost codes. And, and that format of what you uh, set up for your cost codes is entirely up to you. Um, so we have the ability to track up to 20 characters um, with the dots and dashes. So if you're using a standardized cost code format, um, we, we, it's very, that should fit in that format just fine. And then we're tracking uh, the labor and equipment, um, all those cost types. So you can have a breakdown of excavation like you saw with multiple different activities or cost codes below it. Um, so that's something you can define, and, and uh, every client is a little bit different. Justin, anything to add on that? Uh, George's response is too good. <laughs> Looks like we have another one coming in. Um, quest, the question is, uh, he knows it's possible to transfer costs to and from P6. Can the same be done with SAP? Justin will let you take that. Can the same be done with SAP? Um, yeah, it can. And it looks like a follow-up to that. Um, it's, a, it's related to IT. Uh, can hard dollar be modified or customized for estimating costs in other industries such as IT? Um, I don't see why not. Just estimating. You're doing work break. You know, you're essentially doing work breakdowns, um, detailing out certain scope items. Um, I don't see why you couldn't. You know, whoever answer ask that question, just give us a give us a call, and we can maybe look at that in uh, more detail offline. And we will end up with uh, a slide at the end for additional contact information. Um, George, we'll give this one to you. A question coming in if Viewpoint has its own estimating system. No. No, we don't. Uh, that's all part of the integration here. So very, very important concept there. Very good. Any other questions? Uh, we have time for some additional questions. Uh, we'll wait just a second here and see if anything comes up. And it looks like uh, nothing is coming in at this time. So um, Justin will uh, thank you for, for joining us. George will thank you for joining us as well. There's some contact information, again, for additional information on either Viewpoint or Hard Dollar. 
Uh, you have the websites as well as the phone numbers. We also want to remind you that there will be a follow-up email uh, that you will sh you should receive within the next 24 hours with a video copy of today's presentation. Uh, so you can have a chance to uh, take another look at today's webinar in its entirety. And it looks like we do have another question that's just come in. Uh, someone is asking if they want to do earned value, which system should they do it in? Either one of you, Justin, George. <laughs> that's a it's a great question. Uh, that's that's entirely up to you. Um, so I'd you know, I'd, I'd leave that to you. It depends on where you're doing your main line reporting. Um, so we do have clients who um, are doing those types of things with Viewpoint, uh, but you know I can't speak for for hard dollar. Yeah, as George said, it kind of depends on the the customer requirements. We have some that use the hard dollar side to do the performance tracking and specifically their earned value um, and send end results back to Viewpoint. Um, and whereas there's other uh, situations where hard dollar is just doing the estimating, um, kind of as we demonstrated today, Viewpoint is doing the project execution side and we kind of get the, the end results at the end of the day so we can use that information for our benchmarking. So it really comes down to what, what the customer's needs are. Great. And again, um, we do want to thank you for joining us today. And again, remind you, you will receive a follow-up email with a video copy of today's presentation uh, within the next 24 hours. So uh, on behalf of Hard Dollar, Justin, thank you very much for your time and your presentation today. And George, thank you for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. Thanks, everyone.